Good morning, everyone. See a lot of familiar faces. Baruch Hashem. Hope everyone's safe. Um, you know, we are introduced to Parshas Vayikra, and uh, there's no question that the, at the beginning of Vayikra, and certainly a theme that runs through the Parsha, with the, starting with the little Aleph, is the concept of Anova, concept of humility. And humility is, is really something that, uh, I guess, especially in today's world, as we are all hunkered down in our homes, um, you know, might be a, a virtue that maybe seems, you know, a little yeah. simple, because uh, how in the world can sort of uh, the, the pomposity that maybe sort of sets in with sometimes, and the smugness that sets in, certainly now, as a Kodesh Baruch who's put us uh, pretty much in isolation through the incredible, uh, just divine message of our frailty and his greatness. Um, so humility might be a virtue that might be, seem simple right now, or at least uh, easier than, than other times. And it's, and it's really, uh, humility is not such a simple thing. And the, the truth of the matter is that there's a balancing act that we have to have when it comes to humility. Because so, some people sort of think that humility is a simple... Self, self-deprivation or self-deprecation, and it's not something that I think we fully understand many times. Humility is a, is a very, very interesting balancing act. I once had a... a, a I'm using a, it audio. A professor... I once I had a... Name that. Yeah, I this... Are we okay? I, I'm hearing some background noise. Okay, so... I once had a professor who actually gave me an assignment that was, I spent a little bit of time in college, and one of my English assignments actually was was a statement that the, my professor, his name was Salant, he, he made, he, he gave us an assignment about reconciling these two concepts, and I, I subsequently, many years later, found it as one of the statements of a, of a great Rebbe, and the assignment was that we have two pockets, and each pocket we have a note, in one pocket the note says, I am but dust and ashes. And in the other pocket, the, the note says, the world was created because of me. So reconcile these two, these two concepts. And the, the truth of the matter is that's really so much of what life is all about, is on the one hand, maintaining the perspective of Avram Avirani, for I am but dust and ashes, while at the same time, uh, recognizing Bishvili Nivrolam, the world was created because of me. And the message, obviously, is that when we talk about humility, we talk about the, the ills of, of haughtiness and how, how horrific it is and how Moshe Benu, of all of the virtues that uh, he had, the one that he was openly complimented about uh, throughout the entire Chumash was only one thing. Moshe out of Mikaladim, he was the most humble of all people. So humility, when we think about it, does not mean we don't know who we are. Humility means that we don't see ourselves as being superior to anybody else. And again, these are all messages that, I mean, so many things that we can take away on a daily basis from our present condition. Uh, but one of them is this unbelievably equalizing factor of what is going on right now. There are no special uh, characters. There are no privileged characters. There are no people who are spared from this. We are all in this together, and it doesn't matter your background, your connections, your protects, it doesn't matter who you are. We're all in this together, we're all hunkering down, we're all hopefully being connected throughout fields and throughout prayers, but the idea of, of uh, sort of humility setting in in a proper level, where it's not about I'm a nothing, which it could be misinterpreted that way, but rather what it means is that I am, uh, I don't see myself in any way better than anybody else. I, I, as, as much as I'm accomplishing that's my particular mandate and that's my particular abilities and talents. Somebody else has a different challenge. And looking, at, looking the, at the world through the point of view that while I have a mandate and I have a mission, I'm not, I'm not better than anybody else. And the flip side of that is Bishili Nivrola. The flip side of that is the world was created because of me. And somehow, if we balance that properly, while we keep that in that other pocket, so to speak, we don't get develop a haughtiness. It's a, it's very very critical, and this again is something that needs to be reinforced at these uh, very very challenging times that we Chas Shalom, never get down. A Jew cannot get down. There's an incredible Daz uh, in this week's parsha talks about carbonus. You know, uh, he asks the obvious question: Why why 
does God want karbanis? I mean, does God need karbanis? Is he on some chas v'shalom, some ego trip that he needs us to bring him karbanis? What's this whole content of bringing a carbon? And he says, the Rosh says the same thing. He says that karbanis are not about us, uh, not about our Kodesh Baruch Hu. Kodesh Baruch Hu does not need our karbanis. We need to bring the carbon. And he explains beautifully, the reason why we need to bring a carbon is because, is because if a Jew sins and doesn't have any wherewithal to, to uh, feel an atonement, to feel cleansed, by, by the process of bringing a carbon, if there's a sin, and then another sin, another sin, and, and we start looking in the mirror, and who do we see? We see a sinner. We see somebody who doesn't have real aspirations for becoming better, because I've got these sins, I've got this, this, this tremendous yoke on my back, and, and it's putting me, and it's bringing me down, and I'm putting myself down, and I'm feeling down. There's, there's no reason why you'd want to get back up in the race and, and keep plowing forward. He compares it to a fellow with a, with a muddy suit, who is not going to be concerned about some you know, nephew or some child running up to him with chocolatey hands and wanting to hug him, leaving the social distancing piece, piece out of it. So you, you know, he, you want, he, want to hug, he wants to hug you. Well, if you're already muddy, you're already dirty, he's got chocolatey hands, you know what? Go ahead, give me a hug. It's okay, no problem. I'm already dirty anyway, so what's the point? So another Avera, another Avera, go ahead. But if you feel pristine, if you got this beautiful brand new tuxedo, that we have in our closets that we're waiting for the next simcha to put on, and and uh, somebody comes and we're, we're we're dressed to kill, and somebody some kid comes running over with their dirty hands right away. He said, "No, no, don't touch me! You can't touch me! Stay away!" Okay, stay away. Why? Because because I, I can't get dirty. Look at me, I'm I'm clean, and apparently and, and therefore that's why we need karbanos. Says the dasikain of mibali tosfes. We need karbanos. So that we can have that, that cleansing feeling that when we look in the mirror, we see somebody who's, who's clean, who's good, who's positive. Now, the obvious question is, okay, if, if, if that's so critical, then what do we do? What do we do today? We don't have carbonas today. So how do we get that uh, cleansing feeling? Well, uh, the, the rush, the, um, the, the mafarshim do go on to say, and that's why Kodesh Baruch Hu gave us so many mitzvos. Because the fact that we can keep getting up and, and, and doing mitzvahs every single day certainly is, is a factor, but we have to remember, of course, that uh, tefillah is in, in place of karbanos nowadays. Every tefillah we daven represents the, the various karbanos that, that we would uh, uh, have brought in the Beis HaMikdash. So there is this avenue of tefillah, of getting close to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And yes, and even, even now, that, that's becoming a tremendous challenge because we're not in our comfort level. We're not where we normally have to be, where we're normally with a tzibur and now we're alone. But that just raises the ante and raises the, the critical stakes of how we have to approach every single day. But it, you see this balancing act is inherent to, to being a Jew. And it's part of the, the, the carbon on the one hand demands humility because we're coming with tshuva, but at the same time it's demanding a sense of self-worth to know that you've just brought a carbon and you have every ability to now get back into, into the swing of things, come with a very positive attitude, look at yourself in a positive way and have that perspective because otherwise if we're down, we're, we're nothing. If we're down and we're letting everything get to us, let the, challenging is, uh, let the challenges that are out there put us down, then Rahman al that means the Yetzirah is winning. We can't let the Yetzirah win. And I'm just thinking that, you know, uh, the famous Abar Benel, everyone, one of the famous Kashas at the Haggadah, I'm assuming I'm not going to get to talk to you again before the Haggadah, um, but, you know, the, the Haggadah has an inherent question, which is what the Mepharshim said, like the, the Manashtana. And everyone says, why are we picking Dafka these four things to ask Akasha about Manashtana Halayla Hazeb? And the Abarbanel's shot is that we're asking about the contradiction. That we, we, we talk about uh, enslavement with the Mats and the Mara, then we talk about royalty with the dipping. We want to know what about this, well, what's going on with this contradiction? And it occurred to me that maybe the shot is along the same lines, or maybe just a, subtle, a, a little bit of a different twist. It's not. Shout, we're asking, what about the contradiction? And the answer is, well, we started off in, in Avdus, and now we went to Cheris, so we're going through the process of, 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 um, of uh, freedom, of emancipation. Maybe the, the, the answer is that Avadam Yinu and Hashem took us out, and really, in a sense, we have to take the qualities of both experiences and merge them as Jews. We have to, in one sense, feel the Avdus, because the greatest title that a Jew can ever have is Ever Hashem, 
So slavery is not a terrible thing if we're enslaved to HaKadosh Baruch Hu, if we're committed to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And at the same time, we have to walk around with that sense of, 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 of purpose, a sense of, of confidence, a sense of self-worth with the, the fact that we, we went out, that we, now we're a free people, and now we are able to serve HaKadosh Baruch Hu with our individualized special mission. So Bez Hashem, I think this is a, an ongoing battle we have to have. It's certainly being challenged now. Is It's so easy to get down. It's so easy to feel overwhelmed. But if we remember the, 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 uh, this responsibility, to the one hand in that one pocket to keep that, that humility going, to sense of, that sense of it's not, uh, the world's not about me. And I have to have a sense of perspective that all Jews are special. And I looked to everybody in a way of, of seeing the, great, the greatness in them, while at the same time real, recognizing the greatness in myself. And we can balance the, the avdus with the cherus and the anova with the, with, with the sense of confidence. Bez Hashem will fulfill that, that mission that we have and hopefully not let th- this situation, which is certainly very challenging, let's use it f- uh, as an opportunity to grow, an opportunity to share. And Bez Hashem and that's Chus will uh, go beyond all the tsarists that we're facing right now and see Yeshua's for Nechamos very soon in Klai Yisrael.